Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Twit Specials is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Twit Live Special number 165, recorded August 23rd, 2013. Steve Ballmer leaving Microsoft. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a little bit of breaking news. We just found out this morning that Steve Ballmer announced he will resign as CEO of Microsoft within the next 12 months. A special committee has been put together to look for his replacement. And we're very happy to have Paul Therott and Mary Jo Foley, hosts of Windows Weekly right here on Twit. And, of course, Paul Win Super site, Mary Jo Foley, all about Microsoft on the ZDNet.com website. I'm going to let them explain a little bit about the history and a more details about what happened. Thank you both for joining us this morning. Sure. Thanks for sure. having us. I feel like I'm at a wake. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, I know. I'm really sad. It's, it's weird really how, um, yeah. Well, it welcome back, Mary Joseph. It feels a little different than, than the last time we did a special show on someone leaving when we were both jumping up and down, but we were still <laughs> <over>. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A yeah, different yeah. Steve. <laughs> One might say night, Steve. night and day. Night and day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So do you do you want to do a quick overview, Paul, or I can? Either way. Yeah. Why don't you start off? You, I, I okay. did the whole show this week, so you, you yeah. need to get up. Okay. <laughs> you need to get back in practice. Oh, I do. I do. <laughs> yeah. So um, this morning we found out that um, Steve Ballmer is retiring um, sometime within the next twelve months, starting now. Uh, the announcement was made by a press release, and he and Ballmer also sent out an email to uh, all employees at Microsoft. Um, so before today, we knew that Ballmer uh, was planning, he had said he was planning to stay at Microsoft as CEO until his youngest son was off to college. That would mean he would have stayed until 2018 if he had stuck with the original plan. And, you know, there's been a lot of angst um, inside Microsoft, on Wall Street, outside Microsoft. You know, was, was Ballmer overstaying his welcome? Should he be leaving earlier than 2018? Um I actually had a chance to talk to him this morning, Steve Ballmer. I had a, a short phone interview with him. And we we talked about the fact that um, this isn't just a quick snap decision that was made. There wasn't one quick trigger for this at all. Um, it was something that the board had been talking with him um, and amongst themselves about for uh, quite a while, multiple years, they're saying. So, you know, you have to have a succession plan when you're the CEO. You can't just say, well, let's see what happens when I leave, then we'll figure it out. I mean, they've been trying to figure this out all along. Uh, they've been looking uh, inside and outside the company already for candidates. And uh, we, we're just at a guessing point now as to who it might be. So uh, you've already said some things that are news to me. So, for example... Okay. I suppose any anytime you're a CEO of a, a company, especially a big, big company like Microsoft, that your job is always seen as temporary and that you could, you know, be forced out or asked to yeah. leave at any time. But it's really interesting to me that this has been an ongoing conversation that the board has had with Balmer over a period of time. You know, that this isn't a, you know, he woke yeah. up one day and said, eh, $15 <laughs> billion, I think I'm ready to go. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you know, I, when I asked him what he was going to do next, this shows you it, it was something that was somewhat sudden. Um, he said he doesn't know what he's going to do next. Yeah. He, yeah, he doesn't have plans to stay retired, it sounds like. I think he wants to do more in the field. Um, he's, he's in his mid-50s, so he still has some good work years ahead of him, even, yep. even though he does have billions of dollars and he's one of the biggest <laughs> Microsoft shareholders, right? And, he, and his worth just went up because the Microsoft yep. shares right. just bounced after the announcement. Right. Coolly calculated <laughs> to increase his net worth. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, this uh, is a, a, a stark difference, I would say, between the Gates, exit, you know, him leaving and, and Balmer leaving, where when Gates was CEO, we always knew that Steve Ballmer was the second in command and that he would assume the CEO reigns. And uh, that transition, at least externally, seemed to, seemed to happen pretty easily, although I, I guess there were issues internally. But, you know, this time around, there is no clear successor. In fact, I think one of the issues we should get to eventually when we talk about his legacy is this notion that um, a lot of really high-quality executives left the company over the past several years. And it, it's kind of a diminished rank of uh, viable executives who could take over as CEO. 
Um, I, you know, a lot of people are saying <clears throat> it would make more sense for Microsoft to go outside this time to get the CEO because they're starting a mm -hmm. whole new era at the company, you know, one that's much more focused on things that have not been Microsoft's core strengths, specifically devices and services. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, do you want to go out and get somebody who really knows how to make devices, you know, somebody former Apple maybe, or do you want to get somebody you know, who really understands and has been working um, in selling both consumer and enterprise services in the cloud. Uh, you could you could definitely make a case for them going, a strong case for them going outside and getting somebody new. The, the limitation there though, um, as right. people who followed Microsoft know, a lot of times, I'd say most times in fact, when Microsoft takes somebody from the outside and brings them in to be a manager, they almost inevitably fail. There are very, very few examples of outsiders succeeding at Microsoft. Um, and it's because Microsoft's a company, like most large companies, steeped in politics, steeped in a lot of corporate history. You have to really know the ins and outs of all these different divisions at the company to be a success there, I would argue. Right. Yeah, one of the points I had made on, on Twitter earlier today was that I, 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 anytime something like this happens, it seems like, we're at a moment where maybe this should be some self-reflection. And Microsoft might be too big and complicated for anyone who is already internal to the company to actually make an objective assessment of what needs to happen there. And I wouldn't be surprised if you brought in someone from the outside, if they looked at the company like Elop did with Nokia, that they would come up with a solution that would not make a lot of people very happy internally. You know, that this company perhaps is too big and too complicated. And uh, it's interesting that you brought up the devices and services thing because Microsoft, of course, has reoriented its business around those two core ideals over the past year. But when you look at what really makes money for Microsoft today, um, it's not devices or services at all. I mean, they're very much uh, an enterprise software company, essentially. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I guess unless you count software as, as a service, not SAS right. particularly, but yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, well, if you look at the uh, goodbye email that Balmer sent out today to the uh, employees, uh, it's very interesting what they're saying the reason is for this timing. Um, they say he could have written it out till 2018, um, mm -hmm. but they believe that it it's time now to put a new person in the CEO role because if you waited until 2018, they'd be in the middle of this next wave of their strategy. So they're arguing it's better to have them set the strategy, put a new CEO in who's going to immediately take off with the strategy, you know, with, with Balmer sticking around until that person is appointed and go yep. from there. That's actually an interesting point because if you use your 2018 date, is that, that's what it was, 2018, right? Right. Yeah. So five years from now, uh, he says in his goodbye letter that we need a CEO who will be here longer term for this new direction. And this suggests that Microsoft's transition to a devices and services company is going to take longer than that five years, mm -hmm. um, which should be a kind of a warning sign to anybody. I, I also think that, and I, I, I've read this a couple of times, so maybe I'm missing something. Um, he talks about why the timing, but what he never talks about is why. He never actually says in the letter, I am retiring because... Yeah. Of whatever. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, right. I, I guess it's just assumed it's it's uh, time now that we're embarking on this new chapter in our history, which is the Microsoft 3.0 era, if you will. Right. And <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm not writing that book still. Nobody, nobody get any all excited about that. <laughs> no, we'll get you back, Mary Jo. No. <laughs> Yeah, so I, th I actually think you could make an argument that it's time. I mean, a lot of people are going to make the argument Windows 8 was a failure, so he's a scapegoat, or, you know, oh, okay. that um, things didn't he go the way he they He survived did. Zune and Windows Millennium Edition and, I mean, a countless other uh, products. I mean, I, yeah. uh, I saw a statistic today, I think it was today, that Microsoft, it was the, uh, the activist investor was talking about how Microsoft has spent seven, or I'm sorry, lost, 17 billion dollars over the past decade on internet search alone yep. um or i'm sorry the, i guess the word is invested but <laughs> you know it's it's uh, there are bigger problems well uh, there, there are longer term problems i guess at microsoft than uh, one version of windows yeah what happens if a new ceo comes in and doesn't 
want to continue the reorg that Balmer just completed and doesn't want to pursue the devices. See, and so it seems like I, a weird time. I actually don't think that can happen, right? In other words, right. if you look at the at the um, the press release that Microsoft has, one thing that's made very clear is that the board backs this strategy change. And, uh, I, you know, one of the weird deals when you come into a company that, that has the history of Microsoft is the size and scope of Microsoft. Uh, as a CEO, is that a lot of people would just not be qualified because they would want to make that kind of a change. And that's the problem. I, I really do feel like we need a, an objective look at what's going on there. And I don't know that that can happen within the constraints of that fact, that the company right. seems to be, I don't want to use the word term hellbent, but, um, or <laughs> stubborn or whatever the word is, it decisive, I guess, to say it kindly, about staying the course. You know, and yeah. I, I, I wonder, you know, that, this might be the right time for a, an assessment of this or a reassessment of this. Yeah, I think I think you're totally right, Paul. Um, that whoever comes in is got, has got to be on board with this strategy. I mean, it's the current board, you know, headed by Bill Gates, who is picking the person who's going to be the CEO. If you don't believe in what Microsoft's doing as far as devices yeah. and services, you probably yeah. shouldn't apply for the job, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, your ideas are interesting. Thank you for applying. Um, yeah, we're going to go with someone internal. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we let's talk about who, um, yeah. because I think this is kind of interesting. So I I want to talk first about who might be the next CEO if they go internal and if they pick one of the people who who are rumored to be candidates. So I did a post this morning who might be the next CEO if you look inside the company, and I, I'd say my leading pick after looking at everybody who's on the senior le leadership team at Microsoft would be um, Tony Bates. And I'll tell you why. So even though he's pretty new, he just joined Microsoft when Microsoft bought Skype and he came in, then he became the head of the Skype division. Um, he, he fits a lot of things they need, right? He's He's got experience running a very large and successful consumer service, Skype. Um, he's fairly young. I don't remember exactly what his age is, but they want somebody in there who's young. Um, and, you know, he's before he worked at Skype, uh, a lot of people don't know this. He was the general manager of Cisco's enterprise division and also worked on their commercial and small business group. So he has the enterprise chops, too, to do this job. So I, I think he is a very strong candidate if they go inside. Um, yeah. The other one who I think would be a very strong candidate would be Sacha Nadella, who runs, who has been running the server and tools business, which, by the way, has been hugely successful for Microsoft. Very um, steady. Very steady and successful. And now he runs cloud and services. So there's your uh, services part of the devices and services equation. And he's done a lot of different jobs at Microsoft. He's worked on Dynamics, ERP, CRM. Um, he's done a lot of different things in the company. He's an engineer's engineer. And if, if they want to make a point that we're an engineering-driven company, I think Sachin Nadella would be a good choice. Who do you think, he would be, like Yeah, he would be my top choice. I, I understand would, the, yeah. the uh, Tony Bates. Is that his name? Tony Bates? Um, I understand <laughs> that Bates. part not of it. Norman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not Norman. Not no. Norman. Yeah. Uh, choice. But, yeah, I think Nadella. But, you know, he's an interesting guy because I think he's – this is a weird thing to say, but – I think he speaks to the real Microsoft, if that makes sense. In other words, Microsoft has this aspiration to uh, to be some company that it isn't. And uh, and I hate to say it in the sense that, you know, devices and services is that <laughs> part of the company. But I think that does say it pretty nicely. Whereas I think Nadella is what they really are, which is the, that enterprise uh, provider. And that that's the, the true heart of the company. It's the true heart of their user base. It's their true strength. It's the one part of the company that has never really stumbled, you know, that that hasn't done some boneheaded thing along the way where, you know, over the past decade, we've seen you know, things like Windows Vista happen on the client. We've seen things like Windows 8 happen on the client. And the server team just seems to have, you know, glided right through all of that stuff. Uh, very stable, very predictable, very much what businesses want to see. Um, and so, again, I'm not, I'm not, I don't mean to be weird about it. I'm not trying to, I'm not calling for some sort of, you know, split of the company where maybe the consumer stuff goes in some other company or in some other direction or whatever. But um, I, I just, I think of like this type of engineer, well-spoken, intelligent, uh, great background. I just think he would be kind of an ideal choice, but also constrained by the the requirements of the board's, you know, strategy for the company. Mm -hmm. 
there, there are a lot of people thinking uh, Microsoft might go for somebody who used to work at Microsoft who doesn't work now at the company anymore. Bob yeah. um, Right. No. Uh, well, <laughs> he whose name shall never people, be spoken. <laughs> a lot of people <laughs> have asked me this morning, do I think Stephen Sanofsky is going to be the guy? Because, you know, he, he just announced yesterday that he is joining Andreessen Horowitz as a board partner. That doesn't mean he he that's his last and final job. Um, I, t I would say, based on conversations I've had with my sources, there is no way in heck that Steve Stanofsky is coming back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying that a new <laughs> career might be in order for some of us, should such a thing happen, but... <laughs> At least a new beat, possibly. It would yeah. be, yeah, 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 there would be some I decisions. I agree. If he came back, I think I would have to be running all about Amazon.com from now on. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Same city. So, yeah. that, you know, city. yeah. Well, the, and then yeah, there have um, been the oddball ones, though, too, right? Like, right? I've heard everything from, you know, Joe B to Jay Allard should come back. Um, yeah, a few people said Jay Allard. Um, yeah, so I'm surprised no those, one said someone like Bob Muglia or, you know, there's all yeah. kinds of Microsoft execs that have... Uh, even left. Um, Stephen Stephen Elop's name has been mentioned several times today. I mean, if Microsoft doesn't buy your company, why not just buy your CEO and bring the company along, right? <laughs> oh, and they by the both? way, yeah, yeah, the conspiracy theorists would go nuts if Elop came back and brought Windows or Nokia with him. That would be right. amazing. That would be crazy. Yeah. Um, so we don't really know. We're just we're just throwing out guesses here. Uh, a couple of people have asked me if I thought Julie Larson Green might be a candidate for the CEO. And I've been asking around about that as well, you know, because now she runs devices at Microsoft. And I'm hearing, no, she's not in the running. That's what I'm hearing from my sources. It's, what about Tammy you know, Reller? Yeah, Tammy Reller would be a much better choice than Julie Larson Green. And it's not it's not anything personal. It's when you think about the kind of skills you would need as a CEO, Tammy Reller is much more aligned with that kind of thing. And I think she's uh, potentially a credible candidate internally, actually, for CEO. Yeah, she she just recently, um, with the reorg that happened in July, got a big bump up. She is She's basically running central marketing, along with Mark Penn, who does the Scroogle stuff. It's her doing central marketing across the entire company right now. Uh, so, yeah, she could be in the running for sure. So what about external, though? Is there... I know. External, it's such a tough yeah. one because uh, the, the person who could come external will be like the, uh, you know, the CEO of Price, you know, something, uh, what if the company is from Mad Men or whatever. I mean, it would be someone we've never heard of. Um, so, yeah. Someone mentioned uh, Alan Mullally uh, from Ford, who actually, frankly, might be an, an excellent choice. Um, someone yeah. from the auto industry that would be kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think any... I don't think anyone external who's not related to the tech industry comes to mind, you know, is an immediate or obvious choice. And well, you know, if, I was going to say one exception. Do you remember like a, a few, maybe it was a year ago, there was a lot of speculation that Reed Hastings of Netflix might be in the running for some kind of a new job at Microsoft because he resigned from the Microsoft oh, board. Right. And um, everybody was kind of like, why did he resign from the board? You know, is he going to be remember, the next What was the timing on that, though? Uh, I think I'm was thinking it, it was like a year ago, maybe. Yeah, a year ago. So I have a theory about that or, or about the timing on this. I actually think that this was in the works maybe a year ago and that he worked to ensure that Sanofsky would not be in place to mm. assume control of the company. Yeah. Before he allowed that to happen. Could, and that, could be. That is interesting. That, anyway, so, but continue. I'm sorry about Reed Hastings. No, I was saying maybe somebody like him, um, you know, if if you really want to go after the whole startup market and get them more in your camp uh, um, as, you know, developers and customers, maybe you pick somebody who heads up um, a, a startup even, you know, and, and just has a really strong senior leadership team advising that person. I don't know who I would say there, but. <laughs> Interesting. Uh, you know, my, the, the thing about Microsoft, though, is which is it makes it, it a tough company to run, I would argue, is, you know, they're not just a one trick company. You can't know. just know about one thing and run Microsoft. You can't just know about Xbox and run Microsoft. Right. You can't just know about um, uh, like yeah. de consumer devices. I have a you PC have to, at home. I, I can run Microsoft. I know. You know, I, no, I mean, I, right. I yeah. think most people's I don't care how qualified you are for a CEO position at a, yep. you know, a fortune five company or whatever i mean right. 
this is a huge and complex business. And I think almost anyone who came into this, especially from outside, would be just blown away I know. by how big and complicated this thing is. Like, how do you know about both Hadoop and Connect? Right? <laughs> this is uh, the same problem that you and I question. have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, and that's why you have, Microsoft is really, you know, they have the CEO, but you're really run by your board, like all companies, but also by your senior lead leadership team, which is somebody representing each of the divisions. So it's, it's almost like being the president of the United States, right? Like you have all your senior advisors coming in and telling you what's what. You don't have to be an expert in everything, but you do have to know a lot about a lot of things yeah. to, to pull out the CEO. Be, you have to be able to speak and have no one ever question yeah. that you have any idea what you're talking about. And, <laughs> you know, for all the criticism of Steve Ballmer, I don't think the guy's ever got up there and made a jerk out of himself in the sense that he didn't know what he was talking about from a right. product standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, he obviously has a kind of a sales background and a marketer, uh, marketing background, but he really knew what was going on at the company. And yeah. that's not always the case with people, yeah. uh, not just at the CEO level, but at other levels of Microsoft or any other company where uh, they kind of exist in a weird bubble and really don't have any idea what's going on. He was, it's going to be hard to find a guy to replace him. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 you probably remember this. We were, we were both at Build last year. Um, Ballmer got up to do this. the keynote and um, everybody was like, oh, this is going to be crazy. Steve Ballmer's going to demo Windows 8. Like, you know, he's not a demo guy. It was the best keynote ever, right? Oh, he, ever, ever. I, it was the best keynote. I mean, the yep. guy... Even though he runs Microsoft, so he has to know about things at a macro level, he I've actually had a chance when I've gotten to interview him a long, long time ago, uh, before today, uh, to ask him like real, real detailed things about very specific products, and he knew the answer. I mean, that's yep. why it's so crazy, right? Like so many people are like, oh, he's a buffoon, monkey boy, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. That, no, I those can tell people you. don't get it. No, they don't get Steve Ballmer because he knows uh, he knows quite a bit uh, at a very deep level about just about everything I would argue that Microsoft's in uh, and yep. involved in. He didn't, he didn't just pass off uh, management to others. He really was involved at a really, really deep level. It's, it's hard to know the chicken and the egg on this, but I suspect that his yeah. close friendship with Bill Gates plays a role in this. Either that he has a special relationship with Gates simply because he is that kind of person, or just by virtue of the fact of being close friends with Gates, he also... Uh, kind of picked up that level of detail about everything that was going on in the company because uh, Gates obviously was another guy who could uh, who could and did speak to everything that the company was doing very fluently and understood exactly what was going on. Right. Yeah. One of my favorite Steve Ballmer um, memories because I've I've known him since I started covering Microsoft. Um, pretty much, I, I think I interviewed him probably back in the mid '80s for the first time. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm old. Um, <laughs> no, I, was I, was, I was at a show. Um, ruminating on what I might have been doing. No, actually, it was, a, it was a, a shareholders meeting. I was there in Seattle. And this old, very, very old woman who was about four feet ten gets up and goes uh, up to Balmer at the end when all the shareholders can come up and talk to people. And she said to him, I'm having a really bad problem with Microsoft Word. And I, I want to tell you what's wrong. And so Balmer pulled a little notebook out of his pocket and he listened to her and he wrote notes down and he passed it to someone and said, let's help her out and get this fixed. Yeah. And I, I mean, that's the kind of guy he sure. was. That's why yeah. I, you know, all the people who said he's responsible for the downfall of Microsoft, he should have done this, he should have done that. I'll tell you, I, I actually think yeah. it's a sad day that he's leaving. Right. I do too. And, and you know, look, I... There are all kinds of different ways to gauge success. People will point to Microsoft stock price and they'll they'll point to product mistakes and all that kind of stuff. And and that's all there and it's real. And and of course Balmer and, and his camp will, will point to the profits, which are incredible, and the revenues, which have gone up almost exponentially over the past 10 years. I mean, he's uh, had a dramatic impact on the company in many, many ways. But uh, I you know, I don't have the same level of uh, interaction with him that you did, but I used to go to shows like Comdex and CES and uh, before he became CEO. He would just walk around the show floor. And I ran into him several times doing this kind of thing where he was just out in the world finding out what was going on, um, which is kind of a level of um, interaction that you might not expect from the guy who at the time was, I think, the president of Microsoft. And uh, he wasn't escorted by guards or anything. He was just walking around learning, you know. And I, I always just thought he was a smart guy. He, he also inherited a, and a good guy, I should say, but 
you know, he, he inherited a Microsoft that wasn't necessarily of his making. I mean, obviously, that Microsoft had the antitrust issues, uh, late 90s and early 2000s, uh, that really constrained their behavior and their ability to compete. Um, I think a lot of us who've covered Microsoft over that time, you know, wish maybe they had done some things differently. I, it seems like they've ceded entire markets to Google and to Apple uh, that, you know, in ways that were unnecessary and maybe moved a little too slowly uh, to address uh, some of the changing trends and so forth. But um, I don't know of anyone who could have done a better job, and that's the problem. You know, every time someone had written me and said, they need to get rid of this guy, he's a jerk, he doesn't know what he's doing, I'd say, that's hilarious, who would you put in place? And they would either not have an, any idea or their solution was just ridiculous. And so I just don't know who else could have done a better job. Yeah. That's what strikes me as odd about this announcement is that they aren't saying we have someone in mind. It's It strikes me that yeah. they don't know who to replace him with and they figured they probably should go ahead and make this announcement to control the message before they started doing a search and people found out they were doing a search. Yep. Uh, I actually, yeah, I'll right. tell you what I know about that. Um, they claim they've been doing the search for years. Really? <laughs> for years. Uh, uh, wait, years. Let me get the exact wording. Hold on. Because uh, I asked, how long has the search been going on? Um, Since 2000. It. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. I, I, February 2000. Yeah. I don't think I don't think um, that this was something where they were afraid the word was going to get out on the search. The search has been ongoing okay. for sure. Yeah, what, what kind of how, what is this conversation? Can you imagine you're uh, I'm I'll just make something up. You know, you're the CEO of Mercedes Benz or something. And Steve Ballmer's in Europe. And so he comes to for a visit and he says, hey, um, how would you like my job? <laughs> I mean, like, do they do they actually have conversations like this? I mean, it's. It, it's kind of a strange, like, I, you know, we don't understand the world of the CEO, right? I mean, I'm just saying it's it's a weird thing knowing that you could be deposed or replaced at any moment. And for him to suggest that he was actively involved in seeking his replacement over years, I mean, that's, I'm not saying that's crazy, but it's, it's very interesting. I mean, I would just love to be there for some of those conversations. Yeah, here's, here's the exact quote. We've been, we've been looking at this for three, three or four years, start, starting three or four years ago. Wow. Uh, they haven't actually been interviewing candidates that long, but they started the succession planning then, and they've been interviewing candidates already inside and outside the company. So it's not like they're just starting today. Yeah. I mean, I would be, I can't do this off the top of my head, but you, we both have a rough idea of how many fairly qualified executives have left Microsoft in just that time frame alone. I mean, it's, it's really bizarre to me. And I think a lot of people would attribute some of that uh, executive exodus to his management style, certainly. I mean, it seems like he was very careful to position himself so that people couldn't take over for him. You know, I mean, that's that's how it seemed from the outside. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's hard to say. You know, I, another question I asked him today was, um, did Bill Gates ask you to leave or did you ask to leave? And he got a mm. little emotional, I felt like, when I asked him that. Um, and he said, you know, we're... Well, they, they've been best friends for their whole life, pretty much, right? And uh, they went to college together, blah, blah, blah. Um, he, he said, I told Bill what my decision was, and he supported my decision. So, yeah. Huh. I know. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't, I mean, we, we aren't flies on the wall. We weren't in the board sure. meeting when all this was decided. So we can't say this for sure. But um, it definitely sounds like. They um, had been thinking about this, planning it, and it was just recently that they decided on what to do. Except they, it doesn't seem like they've board. decided anything. <laughs> the weird yeah. thing is they've sort of known, he, I mean, I guess they've given it a time frame. So now that it, it's almost like uh, by announcing this, we'll force the issue. You know, um, now I will, I will leave whenever we find a successor, which I think, okay. which is something they might have done you know, yeah. internally. Well, let, let's let's <laughs> you know. talk about timing because uh, people are all about why is it today, right? So what may, why today? Today is a Friday at the end of a very slow news week, right before a holiday week that a lot of people take off. So a lot of people are gone at the beach, not really looking at their news today. So it gives it time to trickle out. And we're almost at the end of Microsoft's first fiscal 2014 quarter, which will end on September 30th. So if the news is bad in fiscal Q1, um, you probably want to be able to point back and say, well, the guy's gone, right? I'm just saying, like, all the wow. crazy thinking that go into <laughs> things like this, right? And sure, sure. you also, you know, with Windows 8.1 about to um, RTM probably next week, 
uh, and launch in October, you want to have a kind of a feeling of a clean slate. I mean, I'm, I'm not going out there and saying, you know, this is a blame Steve Ballmer for Windows 8 thing. I know there are people who will make that argument, but I think um, they're probably thinking about all of these things that people think about, marketing messages and, and how things look to, to outsiders who are looking in at Microsoft. Yeah, well, it, yeah, it's a tough thing. I mean, uh, obviously, as the CEO, he is ultimately responsible for everything that happens at the company, whether you yeah. like that or not. I mean, um, I, you know, Steve Ballmer didn't invent Windows 8, but he, yep. uh, you know, he okayed it. Yeah. I mean, yep. He had to have played a role in it. I'm not, and I'm not actually even further <laughs> suggesting that Windows 8 is a problem yep. or is bad in any way. I'm just, you know, but right. for those people who are not happy with that direction and want to blame him, I mean, I, unfortunately, there is some case to be made for that yeah there's yeah. also it's the announcement about the uh, the bribery investigation in russia and pakistan probably doesn't have anything to do with it but it certainly doesn't hurt that everyone's thinking about balmer today instead of that <laughs> that's true too yeah <laughs> and not to mention the uh, obvious nsa implications of tpm and windows 8 <laughs> i mean my god yeah. <laughs> we've gone off into crazyville here so yeah sure yeah there's also, a, if we're going to stay at Crazyville for just a second, if you don't mind, uh, Windows don't mind. XP launched October 2000, shortly after Balmer, or 2001. So he was there at the rise of XP, and there people are pointing out on Twitter, it ends April 8th, yeah, 2014. Yeah. Right. Maybe that's that the is, day. That is, right. There's your, your Windows <laughs> replacement astrology report for you. Right. <laughs> You know, and maybe that should be the maximum uh, tenure of any Microsoft CEO, like the, uh, the <laughs> length of the, the uh, mainstream support of your most popular product uh, or something. Uh, yeah, that is an interesting coincidence. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's funny. I mean, you can, put, you can come up with so many crazy theories as to why now and how, why are they doing it the way they're doing it. Um, I don't know. It, it's just yeah. it's the end of a really you know, interesting era. <laughs> it really is. And, and, and I, I don't know why I just thought of this and I'm sure people will quibble with this. But, you know, uh, during the uh, Reagan presidential administration, in the 1980s, when his eight years had run out, you know, one of the big selling points for uh, George H.W. Bush was that it would be a continuation of that. And in many ways, Gates to Balmer was, was that same kind of relationship. And that now on the other side of it, it's going to be different no matter who it is. It doesn't matter if it's someone internal or someone external. This is absolutely a new era that is uh, going to happen. And there's, not an there's era. A funny, or an era. <laughs> not an era, or, right. <laughs> there's a funny hashtag going around this morning on Twitter. Um, start, I think Wang Zing started it. Um, it's if I were Microsoft CEO. And yeah. um, people are throwing out ideas. Like if, if you were Microsoft CEO for a day, what's the one thing you would do differently? Um, so mine was I would immediately abolish stack ranking at the company. You know, so stack ranking is the way they um, evaluate employees and decide who to let go, the lowest performing X percent. Um, I just think that hasn't worked out so well for them and that they've lost a lot of very good people through that procedure. Now, I have no I have no knowledge if that's going to stay or go, but um, everybody's chiming in with really great stuff. Um, I saw someone else chime in with... Um, Drop the screw gold campaign, which I also agree with. I know Paul doesn't. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I think it's I, a lot of those things that I've seen have been kind of small deals, right? Like, yeah. um, you yeah. know, screw, yeah, screw yeah. gold campaign is not, is not a big issue. I mean, no. maybe uh, all they need to do is bing and decide who should be his replacement. There you <laughs> <Nice>. go. <laughs> or just go to Google and commercial. say, I feel lucky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. You know? yeah. A couple of people in the chat room have wondered if Balmer is going to stay around at Microsoft in any capacity, whether it's a board member or some sort See, of consultant. I actually or think that's an interesting part of this announcement as well. They never said that, right? You would expect, uh, unless it was completely acrimonious, that he would maintain some relationship with the company, special advisor, board member, something, you know? And I, I think it's semi-notable that there was no mention of even upon, you know, there was nothing in there. I mean, it, that could change, but I, I thought that was kind of interesting. Yeah. I think uh, what, when I talked to him, he said, I haven't had time to even think about what I want to do. Um, and, I, you know, if you know what it must be like to run Microsoft as a CEO and be traveling every day and speaking and doing this and that, I'm sure he hasn't really thought about it, you know. Yeah, but I mean, but using his own words against him, which I, I have to admit is kind of a fan sport of mine. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, he said he was doing he, this has been going on for years. He, 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 we suggesting that he hasn't 
thought about this no. at all? I mean, I, you know, who yeah, doesn't I'm, think about the future and about how things might change and what that future might look like for them? Come know? on. Have you thought about what to do after Win Super Sight? There's nothing after Win Super Sight. What do you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> the world ends. It's, it's La Fin du Monde after Win Super Sight. I'll take you all down with me, Mary Jo. No, I, I, yes. Well, I, I, I have, sort of. I mean, obviously, I don't have a... A plan you know, me and you going into the brewing business, it's, that's just I, like a I, little side game. I do have a big <laughs> part of my future uh, held up in you and I doing a, a, yes, a brewery. <laughs> well, and I think that's the, I think maybe if I can interpret what he's saying, it's not that he hasn't thought about it. Of course, everybody thinks about like, right. oh, what, exactly. well, but he hasn't seriously started to consider what his real options might be. Well, okay, that's what but... I, I agree with that. But still, I mean, there was a meeting of the board and him and they said, OK, we're going to make this press release. And look here, we've written the press release. And we're going to do this and that. And are you telling me that the, there was this notion of what you might do afterwards has never come up? It's like it's like when somebody leaves a company and they want they're going to go spend more time with their family or something. You know, like I, I it's a little odd to me that, you know, I could imagine a conversation where he says, so um, can I mention that I want to be like special advisor to the chairman of the board, you know, kind of thing. And then like a cricket chirps and everyone looks at each other slightly nervously. And I, I just think it's a little strange that he's run Microsoft for uh, over a decade. And yeah, we'll see what happens. You know, it's a little weird. It's very different. You know, again, for, I, I, overall, I would say the big thing here is it's just so different from when it, from the Gates to Bomber transition. Very, very different. Mm -hmm. Except for the advance notice. I mean, they did do that in both cases. But one, one was surprising but understandable. This one, I think, is I just guess it's understandable. Yeah. It's, it, well, the time, it's I, don't know that, I don't know. Is it? I, yeah. I don't know. Well, it's understandable that Microsoft would make a change. Everybody's been pushing for that, I guess, is the only thing I think. Well, you know, their uh, announcement last year about devices and services and then their reorg this year around devices and services suggested that they were going to make a go of it themselves, that the current regime was going to make the change that maybe was necessary. And I, I have to say, you know, I, I, I quibble in some ways with some of the directions that they're going in right now. But overall, I, I you know, change is hard, and it, but it's also, uh, you know, it can be healthy as well. And I felt like maybe they were at least doing something decisive. And now this kind of throws that out of whack a little bit. Now I'm not so sure. Yeah. Maybe they uh, maybe they make a, a trade. They, they send Balmer <laughs> to Nokia for Elop nice. and a platform to be named and later. A first round draft pick <laughs> yeah. to be named later. Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. What else does the chat room want to know? Anything? Anybody have any burning platform questions? Yeah, I just burning plugged a, uh, a little prod. Why did you use the there? phrase "burning platform"? Because we just said oh. Steve and Elop. <laughs> oh, okay. Well chosen. <laughs> that was an interesting turn of phrase. <laughs> okay. uh, no, Richard yeah, asks facetiously, was Balmer crying? But you did mention that he, he sounded sort of, maybe, I don't know if maudlin is the right word. How would you describe it, Mary Jo? Yeah, he did. He sounded, um, he didn't sound happy. And, you know, here's a little anecdote he told me at the beginning. He said, when I went into work today, somebody said to me, congratulations. And he said, I guess that's what people do say to you when you announce you're retiring. He said, but... It just kind of shocked me, like, congratulations. He said, my whole life has been this company. I didn't really think of it that way. And he's not old he's for not a CEO old. <laughs> at all. Yeah. Yep. Right. Or so, for yeah, anyone, I, Tom, or for I, anyone. I was sad. I'm sad, <laughs> you know. I, I have to say, I am sad. And I know there are a lot of people at Microsoft and who've left who think it's a really great day that he's uh, leaving. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've seen so many Microsoft people come and go in the... 20 plus years I've covered Microsoft uh, and different ones I felt differently about. But um, this one, I kind of feel like, ah, oh, this is a sad day uh, because I think for all the things he's done right and wrong, I think so much of Microsoft's image is tied up in Steve Ballmer that it's going to be tough for whoever comes in to kind of duplicate the the whole Ballmerism kind of energy yeah. and, and effect that you see at Microsoft. He was a very steady presence that whole time, you know, for all of the upheavals and the uh, executive ranks and so forth. And uh, in the history, you know, pre-Gates leaving, which we're kind of forgetting about a little bit, you know, he was kind of a steady part of the whole thing. Yeah. A couple of people are asking about Andy Lease, uh, who was supposedly supposed to come back. Yeah, no word on him coming back even. Um, he's on sabbatical now, and uh, I haven't heard his name mentioned by anyone as a, as a likely contender. But we don't know anything about when he's coming back or anything like that, huh? No. 
And some right. people are asking if there was any medical stuff. There, there's no hint of anything like that, right? I've never heard that if there is. Yeah, I don't think so. No. I think that ever since Steve Jobs, every time a CEO oh, is leaving yeah. somewhere, I think oh, everybody goes, wait a minute. Has he right. got a sore yeah. throat? You know, that's... <laughs> Yeah. I don't think you'll see anyone be as secretive as they were about that stuff. And no, yeah. I don't. I don't think that's it. Yeah. Deep Pan suggests Scott Forstall, perhaps. I know sure. that, that keeps coming up. I'm like, oh no. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of people out there looking for jo CEO jobs right now, probably. So. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yep. I like the suggestion. I can't remember who, who put it in here. It flew by of uh, Balmer going the sports route and becoming a commentator in Silicon Valley. Yeah. Kind of like fun. a retired, retired uh, athlete. He could Maybe take he over for uh, Keith buys, Olbermann, you know. Yeah. <laughs> he could go buy sports teams, you know. He, yeah. He, since he tried to buy, uh, what was it, the Sacramento Kings, was it? He tried to buy actually, sports teams. Yeah, you know, he has um, he has big ties to the auto industry, too, into Detroit. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't yep. be surprised to see him end up, on, maybe he already is, I'm you know, just, just betraying some ignorance here, but I wouldn't be surprised if he ended up on the board of like a Ford or GM kind of thing. I, I could see him doing that. I'm, I could see him doing uh, charity work, which, of course, is the staple of all ex-Microsoft executives. One good question I, I've seen a couple people ask in here is why is the stock price going up? I mean, if you if you think back to this conversation you guys have been having for the past half hour or so, mm -hmm. it's all like, we don't know why this is happening. We're not sure, you know, if if the transition is going to be a good idea, but it looks like they're committed to it. All of, None of these things sound particularly positive, and Balmer's been very good with the financials. Yep. Uh, this is a broader question that people have been talking about for a long time, but why are people so happy that he's gone? Well, I, actually, I don't think it's that they're happy that he's gone. I think this is tied to a story that came out this week where uh, there's an analyst investor that wants to make some get a, board, a seat on Microsoft's board and institute some changes. And they have uh, ideas about what those changes could be. And some of them have to do with products and some of them don't. You know, um, the thought being that this type of change could trigger a positive change in Microsoft stock price. And so regardless of what we think about their ideas, which we could or could not step through, it doesn't really matter, but... Um, I think that it's this kind of a thing where when you look at the history of Microsoft over the past 10 years, they announce products, they release products. It's generally new version of Windows, new version of Office, new version of Server. It's all very steady and kind of uninteresting and uh, predictable and all that stuff, which is what you want for the enterprise. But it's not very exciting from a consumer, flashy kind of standpoint, which is a lot of what that uh, stock excitement right now in the tech industry is based on. And I, I think this kind of thing is just such a big event that it suggests true change is coming, and that's what people want to see. You know, that might maybe, you know, maybe someone will take over Microsoft that will lead them down some crazy innovation path that we can't even imagine today. I just think it's about the change, not that any negativity around Steve Ballmer necessarily. Yeah, yeah uh, I, I think you're right, Paul. I think, I think it's more, uh, Wall Street has just been obsessed with this idea that Ballmer has to go in order for anything good to happen for Microsoft going forward. And, um, I, you know, I, th I think they are just saying, okay, now everything's going to be different. I'm not sure things can change so rapidly just because you bring in a new CEO. But um, people um, who, people like Rick Sherland, who work for Nomura Securities, have been big advocates of Microsoft kicking Ballmer to the curb, and they think things are going to be better once that happens. Um, the company you were talking about, Paul, is Value Act. Value Act is the institutional investor who just bought um, an under 1% share of uh, a 1% share of Microsoft stock. And, and Sherland has been saying he thought Value Act was going to come in and really uh, force the board to shake things up by, get, by gaining a seat on the board and, and trying to get them to think about new ways of doing things. But the thing to remember is who by far is the biggest shareholder of Microsoft? By far in a way, it's Bill Gates. Gates, right, yeah. Right. Um, Value Act it will have like 1% if or under 1%, I think it's point something percent. Uh, so, you know, Bill Gates is still running this company as the chairman of the board. Let's let's be clear about that. And so you're not going to suddenly see, even with the new CEO coming in, Microsoft suddenly dump a whole bunch of products that people want them to dump or don't want them to dump and doing a gigantic 180 um, because they have a new CEO. That's not going to happen. It sounds like the new CEO has to be somebody that Bill Gates knows and likes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and who, are, who are those people? <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What was the guy? Um, 
Oh God, I can't think of his name. It's right on Rick, not Rick Rashid. The guy who was running, he was running Office for a while, and he he looked a little bit like Bill Gates, and he left the company. And now he's involved. Who? Yeah, Jeff Rakes. Jeff Rakes. You know, we always thought he was going to be the next CEO of Microsoft. He's a big but buddy he, of Bill Gates. You know what he's doing now? He runs the Gates Foundation as a CEO. That's right. That's hmm. right. Yeah, he so he's not going to, I don't think he's going to come back. He's kind of in the same boat. Rakes and Gates are both like, okay, we did our tech stint and now we're off saving the world. Sorry, guys, can't come back. Yeah, I mean, I think once you get out of there, it's like getting out of a cult, you know. So any of you like thought about, hey, what do you think about coming back? It's like, hey, no, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. We got uh, one person, uh, anonymous, Web6252, I think, uh, asked, what you how, how would you summarize, if I can paraphrase this question, Steve Ballmer's tenure as CEO? Uh, so I would say, I, I'd break it into two parts. Uh, so I would say the first several years of his tenure as CEO were marked by him kind of putting his own stamp on the company. So Bill Gates handed him all his projects and his ideas and said, okay, here, now you run the company. So it took him a number of years to kind of get the CEO footing and toss projects he didn't think were the right ones for Microsoft, rearrange the deck chairs, get new people in management. And I, I, feel, I feel like it's been just like in the past, maybe two to three years that we are really seeing what Ballmer was doing as CEO uh, under his own power. And not cleaning things up or changing things, but just actually doing what he thought was right for the company. So I feel like I feel like his tenure was a, a very divided tenure, um, but mostly I, I feel like mostly a positive tenure. Uh, mostly, I feel like he did good things for Microsoft and its brand image, um, made them a real powerhouse in the enterprise while he was there, um, made some very big mistakes, very public mistakes. Um, but also I, I feel like the company's still in a position where it's still a contender. He didn't like totally tank them, drive them under a bus. Um, so I, I just say good. Yeah. <laughs> no, um, I, uh, yeah. He still got I, up I, to 12 I, months. I, yeah. <laughs> it's not, yeah, that's right. You never know what you can do in the next year. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I, unfortunately for Balmer, a lot of the issues that uh, Microsoft faced over those 10 years, especially the first half of it, were not of his making or his fault, and that they were constrained in the way that they could react to certain things because of antitrust concerns, which now seem ludicrous in the face of what has happened. Um, unfortunately, though, Microsoft also moved very slowly to address competitive threats that they should have addressed more quickly, uh, most recently with things like the iPhone or the iPod and iTunes as great examples, internet search. Um, they just moved too slowly, and, and, and you know, you have to kind of push that up to the top as you would anytime you're you're uh, pushing blame around. And so I would just say that it's mixed. I mean, there's a lot of good and there's a lot of bad. Um, and all, you know, both of those things have to be attributed to him. You can't just give him the good or the bad. If you were going to become CEO, this is another one for, from an anonymous chat room member. What, what, what would you do? What would be your first year or what would you recommend? Because maybe it's hard to imagine becoming CEO. But what, what do you think they should do in that first year? Well, I, I would do what Stephen Elop did at, at Nokia, which is take a, a very hard look at the direction that the company is going. And it would be much harder with Microsoft because there's so much of it. And the problem is that the, the way that you might solve what you see as problems or fix things or whatever it is, is uh, not very obvious. There's no obvious, you, can, you know, no one can look at Microsoft and say, oh, it's easy, you just do this, you know, get rid of search, get rid of the Xbox or, you know, split consumer and business or whatever. There's no, there's no real easy answer. And I would hate to, I would hate to have that job. I would hate to be the person that would do that. I, at Microsoft, like I said before, many times, too big, too complex. And that isn't just products. It's also its structural organization. It's the number of employees it has. Um, I, this is not the lean, mean fighting machine that it was in the 1990s. You know, it's it's grown into this kind of behemoth that's unmanageable. And I think that regardless of strategic directions, you know, that type of thing needs to be fixed too. And it's uh, it's an awful, it would be an awful job. It would be an awful thing to have to do. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's tough to say, like, you know, uh, what's the one thing you would do? What, what would you do differently? Um, I... I Com commented before about stack ranking. I think that's kind of a lower level thing that, that would 
do a lot to raise morale inside the company and maybe um, correct some things that have gone wrong. Um, I used to really like the um, Think Week type program that Microsoft had. Um, and I know they've got kind of remnants of that still inside the company where employees could suggest ideas for projects um, and things that, that they thought Microsoft, Microsoft should take a real look at, you know, whether it was acquisitions or uh, product spaces they should be in or things they should change in product spaces they're already in. I'd, li I'd like to see that get really active again um, and, and maybe even go more public than it's been in the past because I think Microsoft has this bad rap on the outside uh, of never doing anything innovative. And I think there are a lot of really innovative ideas inside the company that don't get enough due. And I think, I think it would be really positive, again, for morale and for outside people looking in to see that come to the fore. Would either of you take the job? <laughs> <laughs> No, heck no. I'm so <laughs> not qualified. I'm a journalist, people. <laughs> right. No, I, well, so thing, many like, people we, ask that. Yeah. Yeah. No, we, anyone can talk about this stuff. I mean, I, I, sure. I, I don't have any management experience, let alone, you know, that kind of thing. I don't, I'm not a manager of people or, you know, I, I just, it's, it, it isn't interesting. Of Obviously, none of the three of us are qualified uh, to, to be CEO of Microsoft, but it is an interesting question. If I was, if I had the experience in the background, is this a challenge you'd want to take on? Hmm. Well, I, I think the better approach to say would, would be to say something like, you know, Microsoft as a, an organization needs to maybe listen a little bit more to the people that care about what's happening. You know, um, part of the divisive problems of the past several years is that um, a lot of their biggest fans or their biggest supporters are treated antagonistically as some kind of enemy. And I think that's a problem. And, you know, I, I, I don't believe that Steve Ballmer ever said, screw these guys. But I think that, you know, again, when you're blaming or giving credit, it has to rise to the top. I mean, you kind of allow this type of thing to happen, and it's really kind of messed up. I Ultimately, everything I, I, that I say about Microsoft and how they need to change and all, it comes back to the same basic premise, which is that somebody needs to look at this company objectively across the board. Across the board, you know, period. And this advice that I'm giving is the type of thing I think that they should listen to across the board, you know. Um, not that I have some genius insight. I just think that it's, you know, covering Microsoft as long as I have and Mary Jo probably uh, would say something similar. Um, you know, it's not hard to spot the general problems. I mean, they're, you know, it's a big company. Yeah, it is a big company. Uh, and it's hard, it's hard to know about everything, right? I mean, even on Windows Weekly, like, all, look at what Paul knows about consumer stuff and look what I know about enterprise stuff. It's like two of us, our, our whole full-time job for both of us is watching Microsoft and you still can't know everything. I mean, course, like, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, there's a lot of things to know about and a lot of things you have to balance, you know, like re look at all the people who are calling from Balmer for years to dump Bing, right? He should sell it. It's a sinkhole, blah, blah, blah. Um, now, now, just now we're starting to see the wisdom and why they invested in Bing. It's not so much to make it a search engine, although that's still part of the strategy. I mean, they're actually doing really interesting things with the Bing APIs and making Bing a developer platform and even selling out like their backend services um, on the machine learning front to other developers. Who would have even have thought about that, um, you know, just a short while ago? It's It's been something that really changed uh, strategy wise. And maybe they knew that way back then. Maybe that was the big plan. Uh, but th that's just an example of one of those things. It's like, how could, how could you ever know enough to run a company like this, where there's so many interlocking piece parts that affect <clears throat> all the yeah. other parts? I don't know. I, I know I couldn't do it. If you put me in charge of Hadoop, maybe. Okay. Then maybe, <laughs> you know, like gave me my nice. little corner of the world. Right. <laughs> Not even that, actually. Just kidding on that. But yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what I would advise to someone. Uh, not that they should ask me, but if but but if you know somebody said, "Hey, I'm thinking about taking this Microsoft CEO <laughs> position," uh, yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. it's like, <laughs> well, <laughs> you know. how ready for a challenge are you? Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, exactly. That is not an easy job, nope. and. I think that's one of the reasons people are so fascinated. A couple of people are complaining, like, why are you only talking about the replacement CEO? And I think it's fascinating to, oh. to wonder what kind of person is the right yes. person to it's take so that talent It's so easy off. to say, you know, and this, this is what, you know, it's cheap. And this is why, I, you know, of course, it, it, that includes the stuff I'm saying as well. I mean, Microsoft should get rid of Bing, you know, or whatever it is. You know, it's a simple statement, you know. 
Um, you don't understand the ramifications of something like that. You also don't understand, none of us do, and I don't understand, what it would be like to be an individual who, by uttering something in public innocuously in response to a question or just on a stage somewhere, could send the Microsoft stock price nosediving that day, losing billions of dollars of net worth for hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. I mean, I, the responsibility that such an individual has on so many levels is just something I, I can't even comprehend. It's like trying to understand what a billion of something is. Like, I just can't, I can't fit it in my head. And I, 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 <laughs> I feel bad for whoever does this. It's going to be yeah. awful for them, I'm sure. Tough job. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. And historic. Steve Ballmer was my was a Bill Gates business manager. He was what employee number thirty. Is that yep? Is that that's right. That right? So, yep. So first you know. salesman, right? The, he led sales right. for Microsoft back in the day. I mean, yeah. How do you how do you get any whoever comes in next? It's like it's like being Tim Cook after Steve Jobs, right? It's like yep. No matter how good you are, it's going to be tough to fill those shoes. <laughs> Paul right. Allen is the only man known. <laughs> <laughs> right. If there were any evidence at all that this company is not interesting in change, in, in, interested in change, changing at all, you know. Right. We're going to go back to CPM and basic. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to get bored and sell it within three years. That's my exactly. experience with Paul Allen, of course. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Well, uh, I, I know you guys uh, have a lot of stuff to do, obviously, on a day yeah, like today. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we should probably wrap it up here. But any last thoughts before we, we finish up? I think um, my last thought is I think Steve Ballmer's parting gift to the world should be one more video. Like <laughs> the monkey boy video. We right. need one more with him yelling out, I love this company. So come on, Steve. Don't, don't leave without doing that. Yeah. I think he should become a, blo a vlogger. He should start a YouTube channel. <laughs> he would be hilarious, wouldn't he? It would be. It the was. guy is actually really funny. He's really funny. Like, he, I've heard from people who've worked for him. He's super tough, and he really yeah. yells a lot. I mean, there's the whole throwing the chair anecdote, you know. Punching walls. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of stuff. I know. But he is really funny, and uh, can be really funny in person. Well, and, and more to the point, though, he's also passionate, right? I mean, isn't that the guy you want? I mean, I... If, you know, when Mark Lukowski goes and tells, you know, one of the NT architects tells him he's leaving to go to Google and yeah. he starts throwing furniture around the room, you know, heads up, that's what you want, right? If, yeah. if he just you gave you passion. a come, yeah, you want that, right? And, and I, look, I know we're going to withstand some blistering attack by some array of people that can't stand the guy who know nothing about him. And, uh, and that's too bad, but that's the way, you know, it's the world we live in. And I, I would just fall back on what I, I said on Twitter, which is that Steve Ballmer was one of the good guys. Um, and so this is unfortunate. And um, I don't, I don't, this should not be a cause for celebration for anybody, except for him, maybe, you know, <laughs> uh, assuming that he was uh, ready to get out of there. Yeah. Well, both of you, thank you so much for being generous with your time uh, and chatting with us this morning. Great. Uh, Paul came up with the idea on email. He's like, hey, shouldn't we? Didn't we just get on and start talking about this? So thank you for, for, for thinking of it, Paul. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, Mary Jo Foley, of course, host of Windows Weekly, twit.tv slash WW, and allaboutmicrosoft.com. You can also read her on ZDNet. Anything else before we go that you want to tell people about, Mary Jo? Uh, I'm going to have up uh, in a little while my Q&A with Balmer. So stay tuned for even more little interesting tidbits from that. Excellent. I'm looking forward to that for sure. And Paul Throt, winsupersite.com. And also host of Windows Weekly. Uh, anything else to let folks know about before we let you go? No, nothing specific. I'll be I'll be working all weekend though, so I'll be <laughs> I'll be out and about. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. So kid, just just keep your browser pointed at windsupersite.com. We're actually going to have Paul uh, sit in for a few minutes on TNT today to kind of summarize some of the stuff we've been talking about today. So thanks for doing that, Paul. Appreciate it. Sure. That is it for our breaking news coverage. In case you missed it and you're coming in right at the end, Steve Ballmer announced within the next 12 months he will step down as CEO of Microsoft. And a committee has been created consisting of board of directors, including Bill Gates, to look for his replacement. And so he'll step down whenever they find an acceptable replacement. That's breaking news. Whenever there's breaking news and technology, turn to twit. Live.twit.tv. I'm Tom Merritt. See you later.